live ladies and gentlemen it is finally fall it is finally one of those days when i wake up sip a little coffee sit in front of the fire and it feels freaking good man fall is my favorite season 100 percent I don't know about y'all. You guys let me know what yours is. Fall is 100% my favorite season right now. The high today is 48. It's perfect. It's crisp. It's cool. I love it. But we're not talking about the weather today. We're talking about hunting. We're talking about elk. And as you just saw, I just said, elk live out here. Yes, they do. Actually, not directly right here, but like a couple miles that way, they do. That's where I was hunting them this year, man. I have hunted elk a few times in my life. You know, I do live here in Colorado. We got them a lot of places, but I've never hunted them here in the High Plains. The High Plains? You freaking serious, bro? <laughs> this is why I love fall right here too, bro. Come on now. Nah. Come on now. Nah. Come on now. Nah. Anyways, hey, stop doing your hair for a second. Film me. I got to show them. New shirt of the month, man. This is probably my favorite one we ever done, dude. Shirt of the month, right? Outlaw, K-I-F-H. Keep it freaking Halle Berry. No, but y'all know about that. We got it on the Heather, uh, one of these district shirts. They're super comfy. Here, look. Look. Oh, look at you. Yeah, dude. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Outlawmerch.com. Get you one. Shirt of the month, baby. <laughs> talking about elk hunting today. This is my elk hunting truck. The old baby Duramax, right? Uh, look at that bed, man. You guys will find out pretty quick that an elk ain't gonna fit back there. We gotta use somebody else. You ready to go, cheetah girl? Cheetah come on, Raven. Oh, yeah. Come on, Raven. Oh, come on. That's so Raven. It's the future, I can say. You sure you're rolling? Yeah, I've been rolling for 32 seconds. Ah, for real? Yes. Oh my gosh, okay, anyway. <laughs> I live in the high plains of Colorado. A lot of people don't know what that is. I don't live in the mountains, but we live in the high plains. What do we live at, Mrs. Outlaw? We live at, um, like 60, 65? Yeah. 60, yeah. We live at... Over 6,000. Yeah, we live at over 6,000 feet, okay? Now, up in the mountains where I've elk hunted before, we've hunted elk at over 10,000 feet. But the coolest thing is, is elk used to live all throughout the plains. They used to roam with the buffalo way back in the day before Lewis and Clark came through and Daniel Boone and all these people and they just wiped them out. But there is still some elk that live in the high plains today, like right down the road from my house. It's a super hard tag to get, but I got her this year and was lucky enough to be able to harvest an elk um, from the high plains. But as you can tell by the title, it was hard for me to show it to you guys because of the shots and um it was the situation that we were in um and i didn't like it so i could have just not uploaded this and said to hell with it and just posted the picture on instagram but i feel like we could all learn a lesson from this so all right yeah that's good not every kill is a perfect kill yeah i'm gonna get into that okay later. howdy partners welcome to out the outdoors this is what happens when you forget your orange you get a Basically a third season. Freaking beanie that's just hot as hell and it doesn't help when it's 85 degrees out right now. And then just a cheap Cabela's thing that we found in the truck. Take these guys out. I got freaking Bose headphones as my earplugs. Dude, this is freaking hell gone, man. And we're in a blind. Can you believe that? So, the wind is perfect right now. It's blowing pretty good. It's probably blowing 20, 25. We're hunting the high plane. Come over from uh, there's a pretty big elk herd on the 
owners of the property to come over this way. And um, we're getting a few good bulls on camera. We actually, when we were coming up to the place to hunt our friend's property here, I was, I saw a good group, probably a group of like 20 cows with a decent bull. He was a six by six. And um, they were making their way kind of this way. So we might have them come, but they might come from behind us the way they were kind of feeding. So I know we got some good bulls. It's the rut right now. We don't really know what's going to happen. We got the muzzle loader locked and loaded. We got our shooting stick here. going to town to get a bunch of stuff done and then nothing you went into town for and happened so anyways we're back from town guys as what i believe you just saw you saw me and in-law sitting in a blind elk hunting you don't see that much we sat on that water for two days and uh it seemed like we were checking our cameras and they just were staying nocturnal so the clip that you actually saw of the blind right after we got done filming that clip and we saw that big five by five come into the water my boy casey texted me right after we saw that five by five and he told me hey man i'm hearing this bull bugling he's like i don't know what he is but let's walk to the top of this ridge and see what we can find so we did just that Reload. Oh Lord. That's the one. One of many mud jugs on my freaking desk. So as you just saw. We've got an elk looking right at us. This is the one that Casey heard. This is the one that we heard when we were walking up. This is the same bull. I didn't know it at the time, but this is the same bull that I saw earlier in the day in a pasture across the way, and I figured they were gonna work their way down to the water. But anyways, another shot that happens, dude, the worst timing possible. This is what it's hard to share. But this happens, especially on public land. It happens a lot, especially when, you know, there's a lot of land around and you don't know where exactly other people are. This is why it is muzzleloader season and people are wearing orange like me. There was another shot that happened right when I wanted to make my shot. Um, spooked everything. Had to make a shot that I wasn't 100% comfortable with. I feel like if this shot didn't happen right before mine, which just so happens he dropped a cow that was standing pretty much right next to my bull. Maybe I would have made a better shot and got it done quicker, but it didn't go that way. But I'll just let you guys see for yourself. Shoot. 
Good hit. Reload. Here he goes. You did. <laughs> Those animals are freaking tough, man. Oh, well done. Nice yes, six sir. by six. Whew. So basically what ended up happening, there was another hunter uh, with a rifle for a, had a cow tag. And just so happens right when that bull was uh, gonna turn broadside on me so I could get that perfect shot, he shot a cow, dropped it, and then the bull spooked. There was a fence. You guys saw where I met up with that other hunter. There's a fence right there that goes on to private land. And um, we didn't want the bull to go over there obviously because we were so close. That's why I took the shot. And then, thank the Lord, um, I was able to get another shot and reload as fast as I did um, to get another shot, which still wasn't the greatest shot. It dropped him, but, you know, these things happen, man. And for that, it's hard to, uh, it's, it's hard, you know, it, um, it still was quick, but it's at the same time, you know, as a hunter, you want to make the perfect shot and when you're dealing with a muzzle loader with no scope you know you don't really want to shoot past 100 yards some people can get really good with them you know to me i was comfortable at 100 yards and both my shots were over 100 yards you can't reload as fast because you're not allowed to use pellet powder as well so this is what muzzle loader hunting is all about it's crazy man there's so many different variables and um and sometimes it's it's really hard to get a bull down we got her done uh not in the way that i wanted it to happen but the bull was down and now I have hundreds of pounds of meat to feed me and I will say my family because I've got, you know, freaking fat dogs over here just laying on the gosh dang ground. <laughs> hey, Bands, bro. You excited to eat some milk, buddy? You excited to eat some milk, dude? just saw was like he came up here and he pushed him over the fence uh, was he a five by something he was a five by five, five. Yeah, he had huge backs like this was completely open but it was there's, there's... what are we doing with that jerry eating that some bit tonight <laughs> frying it up mm. Yum, me. Want that first? Easily. Three. September. Elk time, baby. She is legal, baby. Good God. Oh, Heck yeah. Back in lost truck. <laughs> it was a good thing you brought your truck today because yeah. you would have had to pour that thing down completely. Whew. Listen, man, if I've learned one thing from this whole situation, the next few days after this hunt, I was a little bummed out on how it ended. I was like, man, I could have, you know, I, I really get down when something doesn't go exactly how I want. For instance, like last year, freaking fly, you son of a dick, man. It's cold out, dude, with a dick. Last year when I was in Kansas, I shot this beautiful, beautiful eight point. It happened perfectly, quartering away. Didn't even need to blood trail him. He dropped, freaking get out of here, man. He was expired within 15, 20 seconds. Sometimes hunting doesn't always happen that way. But what I do know is that I have the most utmost, that doesn't even make sense. I have the utmost respect for those animals especially elk man they are just so magical so majestic and for me to appreciate and to respect that animal more than anything else at that moment was to take every piece of meat off of his body and consume it and make sure that i do consume it that's why i took the elk or the heart out that is why i took the liver out i haven't eaten the liver yet i ate the heart that night um 
the tenderloins and then we put the whole body into uh in-laws truck and um uh, took it to the processor the next morning and we got every inch of that elk done up now i usually uh process all my own deer and antelope as far as this elk goes i was getting married like in two days from this elk hunt so i didn't have time to process or anything so we took it to a processor um, elk are so big anyways it's it, it takes a lot of time to process it yourself so We'll be getting that meat soon. Like I said, man, what I learned the most is no matter how the hunt turns out, make sure that you still respect that animal 100% and eat every part of its body. As weird as that sounds to some people, and some people could listen to that right now and just be like, what, You're, how, what a disgrace, man. Eat every part of its body. What in the world? Dude. Do you know how many elk and deer hunters I know that I have met personally that literally cut the back straps out and that's it? And they leave the rest. It's actually illegal in a lot of states. But a lot of people get away with it, man. That's not respect to me. And if you're going to be a hunter, that responsibility is yours. And that's exactly what I did. Thanks for watching, y'all. That's my elk hunt for 2020. I do have another cow tag in the pocket that in November, December-ish, I'm probably going to go fill as well. And um, I'll do the, the same thing there, hopefully this time with a better shot. And this time it'll be with a rifle with a scope. So um, that's bound to happen, hopefully, with a lot of practice as well. Keep it healed, y'all. I got to go on my honeymoon. Reckon we'll see you then.